Hello, welcome Arlen here. Today we're decorating some holiday cookies using fondant. I found these great embossing molds on AliExpress. Each of them comes with a matching cutter. Here you can see the mold. So you press the fondant in there and then you can use the matching cutter to trim off the excess or you can use you know a different shape it just has to be large enough to hold all the design in there this deer for example fits within this plaque which you could then secure to the front of your cake so i'm going to be walking you through the process there are i think about six designs we're going to be working on so let's jump into it wilton has these boxes so there's four colors in there so if you don't make a ton of cookies it's worth it and you can use the coupon so this box is $20 so $6 off and there are the colors all quite nice for Christmas the yellow you could dust with a gold powder to make it a little bit more festive so I'm starting off with this Christmas tree and now I'm utilizing a technique that they use to actually like decorate the prototypes the photo in the listing for these and so they've pushed in colored fondant into the ornament holes which are deeper in than the actual tree and so I'm using my boo-boo stick and removing the excess red fondant okay so there it is and then when I roll the green on top well I'll have these really brightly colored ornaments so I'm just Pressing that in there. All right. We're going to flip it over to check it out. Let's look. And you can see there, there they filled in those holes. What's really important to consider is that once you start rolling, if this does not work out, it jumps or you have to re-roll, well, that red will compromise the green. It's not like when you paint, whereas, you know, if you screw up while well, you just re-roll, no problem. But now we've introduced a second color, so it's, um, we've got a variable in there so that if it does mess up, well, I'm going to have these little red particles in my font, my green fondant, which I probably do not want, right? Now, another thing is if I add cornstarch to this, well... I'm going to reduce the stickiness of my corns of this green to those red dots. I need those to fuse together. I need the green dot the green to stick to that um, to those red dots. This is a tricky one. So many things to think about. So now I'm adding cornstarch, okay? Because I need the fun to release from the mold, but if now I've added cornstarch, well, will those red dots adhere to my green? So this is what my brain is. I'm wondering if I should add a little bit of water to these red dots. Oh my God, the dilemma. So I'm just going to put it down here and let's see. Roll up, roll down. Let's see how it's going to. looks good oh you see the red did not stick to the tree at all they stayed completely completely in the mold and now with a toothpick I'm adding the water to the back of each of these red dots okay you don't want the green to stick to the mold but it needs to stick to these dots and you don't want to get any water anywhere other than on those dots. Adding cornstarch to both sides so that my rolling pin doesn't stick because that's causing a jumping to happen. There, okay. There. And now this way, make sure you have your guides on so that 
it doesn't get too thin and flat or else you won't be able to pull it out. Okay, that feels about right. We're going to flip it over and see. So this is my take two of this concept. And I can see some of the red got pulled out. I can see it there on the green. There. I can see it right there and there, but I don't think it's going to get any better than that. So I'm going to just use this. Now, it's impossible for me to know. They could have very well photoshopped their finished versions, you know? so that it looks a little bit more perfect in the photos. So you can, with some gold paint, you can come in and paint the garland. You can obviously paint the tree trunk. Well, there it is. The cookie cutter, these plastic cookie cutters don't cut a super sharp line. I'm just doing a circular motion in the hopes of cleaning that up a bit. All right. Flipping it over, and now I'm adding water to the back to, let's get them all in here in a row so I can just work a little bit quicker. So here, they've got water on the back, and these cookies were cut with the same cutter, and you can see there, I can kind of align you can kind of see, and I'm just putting the cookie on the wet fondant so that it sticks, and then I can flip it over. You see here it's kind of low, so I'm just going to lift it and readjust. There. You have to be very careful though, because the fresh fondant is so soft. So there are the Christmas tree versions. I have to say, pretty cute. So you want to get it to attach to the surface of the cookie. The rolling portion of the tutorial is very redundant for all of the designs. It's the same thing. You're taking a clump of fondant, you're adding cornstarch to both sides so that the fondant doesn't stick to the mold and doesn't stick to the rolling pin. You need a rolling pin with guides so that your fondant is the same thickness. You don't want to have too thin or too thick or bumpy. And then once you've got a good impression, you can use the cookie cutter that you used to cut the cookies to cut an exact match for the fondant decoration. Flip that fondant decoration over, add a little bit of water to the back and secure your cookie. I suggest that you let them dry at least a couple of hours before you start painting so that a bit of a crust forms on the surface of the cookie. And here you can see the painted versions. I'm going to show you how I actually added color in the very specific sections. Here is the deer in white, as you can see here, and here it is airbrushed and obviously you can see the color really brings it to life and if I had done it all in one color and fondant well it would be nice but just kind of a little one-dimensional so now we're going to airbrush and I'm going to be showing you how I created the, the shield so that I could protect the you know different sections from getting color so I want to get the brown just in one specific area I don't want the brown on his scarf, for example, so let's... Here I have a wax crayon. I've taken off the white wrapper on it so that I can use it sideways. I've got the embossing mold and a piece of white paper. I've laid the wax crayon sideways and I'm basically creating a impression of the mold so that I can then create some shields. I'm going to use my X-Acto to trim out color by color. So there will be a shield for the scarf area, for the you know portions of the ears, the pink inside the ears. So you can create a shield for whatever color section you want. You can make the shields for multiple colors as long as they're not right next to each other. You can kind of pinpoint your airbrushing. 
And so that's the first step to this section color quickly with your airbrush. Here I'm cutting out the hat portion of the Santa and I have a, a sharp blade, an exacto, a pen blade and I'm cutting on a healing board so I don't damage my work surface and I'm just carefully cutting section by section so that I can use the shield and really get very detailed in my painting. I don't have to um, worry about getting red everywhere and I can work much faster than if I was painting with a paintbrush. And now I'm just holding the paper so that it doesn't fly up. And I'm just lightly misting my brown area. So you can hit the paper so that you don't get a lot of pigment on the fondant. It kind of bounces off the paper and onto, I don't know if you can see. And now I'm painting the little kind of areas that have like sort of furish type detail. Oh, how am I so blank? Okay. And now I just want to add a bit of uh, blue here to the scarf area. There. And those ears. So a light misting of the pink overall. And then I'm very close right here to darken up the corner. And there is the little deer. You don't really have to wait after you've airbrushed. The color goes on pretty dry if you don't oversaturate the design. As you can see here, I did like just blush coloring and it's it's really enough. And now I'm just outlining the design. The fondant press kind of gives an elevated outline and so I'm able to, with the tip of my marker, just touch that and add pigment to the sections where I want it. You can really pinpoint your color. You do need a bit of a dry surface so that you don't cave in the fondant. Here's the toy bag and I've created my protection. Oh, I have to flip it over for it to fit. Now you can see it's going to protect the rest of the cookie. So let's just, I'm going to hit a bit darker on the edges. And now the gifts. So let's paint more of these toys. Or the gifts, I should say. And now this is a uh, dark green. I'm just filling that, you can see. And now some gold. The last few bits on the gifts here. So I'm starting off with gold color and then I'll be adding the metallic after. So just some gold pigment first so that when I airbrush the metallic, well, it's not so flat. If you paint gold on white, it tends to be a little bit washed out. So here are the two gift versions, okay? They're painted and now I'm just stamping the black lines on. You could certainly use a paintbrush, but it's very, very long if you're going to just come in and paint. Now I'm barely touching the surface because if you squish it down, well then it goes past those raised fondant lines, which you can see here, and it touches the rest of the of the design and so you want to try to stay as as flat you don't want to squish into the surface of the fondant on this particular cookie a little bit of black isn't so bad
there. How cute is that? I'm just adding a bit of blue to the snowman. I'm shading. I think I'm going to put some pearls in the edge of the hat there. I'm trying to figure out what to do. And now I'm just adding some water to the trim on the hat here to make it sticky. So the ribbon on the hat, a generous amount of water. Not like you're not dumping a bucket, but you know, you want it to be sticky. And I'm going, and because it's kind of like indented, it will not um, pop out. So now I've got these little pearls and I'm just pouring them in there. And thanks to the design, you see, let's just remove the excess. I'm going to fix my... You see, makes a cute little trim on that hat. Here are my completed cookies. You can see all the bright colors in the very specific sections. It just brings the cookies to life. Uh, fondant, we don't see a whole lot of painted fondant because it tends to get very sticky when you start painting it. But with the airbrush, it pretty much goes on dry. So it's a completely different um, end result. It doesn't look kind of goopy and sloppy. It goes on really polished looking and the markers as well. The markers go on relatively dry so you're not over hydrating your fondant. So here's a close up of the reindeer and the snowman. Here's Santa with his gifts, his ho ho ho. Make the sets how you want them. You'll see on the AliExpress shop they have other designs for the holidays. So I hope you enjoyed that. Try something new. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'll see you in the next cookie tutorial.